It's Shabbos. The holiest place on earth was, of course, the Temple Mount, where the Temple stood. Prior to that, it was the Tabernacle, which traveled with the Jewish people in the desert, which we read around this week's Torah portion. Nachmanides explains that the holiest item in the Temple was, of course, the Ark of the Covenant, which was a representation of the prophecies of Isaiah and Ezekiel, seeing the Divine Presence reside on a chariot which, were made, which was carried by angelic creatures. That was represented in the Ark of the Covenant, um, having these two cherubs with faces of angels and wings of angels um, upon it. Um, and the divine voice would come between these cherubs and Moses would hear it from that point. And then brought further down into the Ark, was where we have the tablets, the, ten, the, ta the two tablets with the Ten Commandments, plus a Sefer Torah, which of course is the point of connection of God on earth, is the Torah and its mitzvot. Rashi, interestingly, has a slightly different perspective. Yes, on the one hand, the temple, the, the Ark of the Covenant is certainly uh, the place that we put the Torah, the, the, the tablets, but he sees the covering on the ark, which has the cherubs, as, as an identity in itself. It has its own idea of what it is. And it's seen by the fact that Rashi is of the opinion that the face of the cherubs or the face of children. What does this represent? Well, there is a, a medrash called Tanad Ve'elio, which is a medrash attributed to Elijah the prophet. And Elijah says... There are two, mo the two most precious things on earth are, is, are the Torah and the Jewish people. But who comes first? In other words, who's here for whom? Is it that God wanted the Torah to be kept so he creates the Jewish people? Or is it that a God loves the Jewish people so he gives them what is so precious to him, which is the Torah? He says, naturally, you would think that the Torah comes first. And that's kind of on a revealed way. It seems like, what, where do we see holiness? Holiness you see in Torah and its mitzvot. Says Leo Anavi, but I say no. I say it's the Jewish people who are the purpose, and the Torah is here for their sake. And this is kind of, you could see the, the, the two perspectives of Nachmanides and Rashi. Nachmanides is taking the perspective that the Ark of the Covenant is all about the revelation of godliness on earth through Torah. And Rashi says the Torah is one thing, but we also have a unique connection with the Jewish people. And therefore, the covering of the Ark is called Kaporet. Kaporet comes from the word Kippur, which is atonement. How, how is it possible for us to have atonement? If the entire purpose was Torah, then when you go against Torah, that's it. You should be cut off. But no, because we are the purpose, so therefore, when we do go against Torah, Chas Rasholim, we have an opportunity of kaporet, of having atonement. Why? Because we are precious in the eyes of Hashem, in, so to speak, on our own. Yes, and because of that preciousness, that preciousness, Hashem gives us the Torah, because that is the greatest thing for us. It's, it's, it's like a, a, when, a, when a father develops his incredible business, the work of his life, and then he gets his children to take over the business. Is it that because of his uh, love for the business, he gives it to his children to take over? Or is it because he loves his children that he gives them something that's precious to him? And uh, of course, the, the goal is not the business, the goal is the children. And so too with Hashem and the Jewish people, we are the goal and he gives us what is so precious to him in the Torah because of the goal that he has in us. And this is, a, I'll tell you a little um, beautiful story that represents this. You have Jews who are disconnected, it would seem, or far removed, yet show such incredible beauty in their bond and desire to connect to God. So there was this uh, Russian fellow who came to Israel and they needed to prove his, his identity, that he's Jewish. So they, um, so Rabbi Lau, at the time, um, had these witnesses because there's no documentation from Russia that he could rely on. So he had these uh, witnesses come along and there was this one witness who came along and says, listen, I know this guy's mother and this fellow's mother is a doctor in a hospital 
and uh, she has no connection to the Jewish community except for the following. She was a smoker. She would smoke a pack a day. Every day she would take one cigarette from her pack and put it aside. Once a year she would come to me and give me 365 cigarettes and I would go out there and try and get some flour and make matzahs for her to have for Pesach. So Rabbi Lau tried to call her and he gets through to her and he says to her, you know, I keep Pesach for eight days. You keep Pesach all year round. You have the preciousness of the Jew who wants to connect to Hashem, even if they seem so far and so removed. And this is something that we see uh, going on now in Eretz Yisrael, in Israel. We see these these people who were killed at the at the Reim festival. Uh, some, uh, some of the the soldiers who, even though coming from observant homes, didn't exactly keep things. But even in within them, you saw an incredible um, strength of character, uh, a, a holiness, uh, a beauty that represents the beauty of the Jewish people. And uh, maybe that is why we see this incredible anti-Semitism around the world to tell us, hey, you guys are different. You are just like the temple, just like the, 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 the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant is a entity from beyond this world in this world. It's meant to bring divine holiness that's beyond the world, bring it into our reality, into our world. So too, the Jewish people. As a matter of fact, uh, I believe Louis XIV asked uh, Pascal um, to prove to him the existence of God. And Pascal says, the Jews, the Jews are the greatest proof of the existence of God. And it is those who hate God who hate the Jewish people. That's what the Torah tells us clearly. It is misanecha. Those who hate you hate the Jews. And maybe that is why we see this incredible anti-Semitism uh, around the world telling us we are different. There's nothing to, to talk about. We are different. We are here to represent a holiness, a godliness into this world. We, we need to be seen as such, as different. And so even our best friend right now, America, is, 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 is showing how how totally out of touch they are that after an october 7th they should be talking about a palestinian state give reward to terrorists it's mind-boggling it's absolutely mind-boggling that they could even be talking about it besides the fact the incredible danger that that represents to the jewish people it's it's gifting terrorists terrorists which will cause them horrible um repercussions but to us, what it says is that we have to realize we're a nation who resides alone and it is our task to, to strengthen each other, to be there for one another and to realize that we have a task to bring godliness, holiness to this world because we are different. We are absolutely that. There's a... Um, a beautiful medrash that's very quite famous. Why was Moses chosen to be the one to lead the Jewish people? So the the portion where the Torah portion where it speaks about God choosing Moses begins by saying he was a shepherd. And the medrash tells us that one day one of the his goats went went astray. And Moshe Rabbeinu went to follow the goat and he and he chases after him and he finds him by a, a brook of water and drinking and then Moshe says oh I didn't realize you were thirsty and he gives him to drink and he picks him up he must be tired and brings him back to the, the flock and Hashem says oh you know how to take care of the sheep I'm going to have you guide and be the shepherd of my sheep of my Jewish people and the question is what was the big deal what Moses did this is something that any shepherd would do if you're responsible for your sheep, you have to go make sure you have all the sheep, all the goats. I mean, it's your responsibility. So the Rebbe said something remarkable. It's not that he went and got the goat. It's the fact that he heard that when the goat went astray, he didn't see it as a stray goat. He saw it as, a, as one that was thirsty for water. When we see our young people or older people going astray, we shouldn't say, ah, oh, they're just going against Judaism. They're just bad. They're just removed. No, they're actually also thirsting for water. They're thirsting for the word of God. 
and maybe they they need another way for them to be able to tap in and to plug into it but we always see the beauty of the jew is still there the holiness is there always and when we see our fellow jews in that light we 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 unite with each other we're stronger together and indeed together we will be victorious good job